This is the Red Baron, one of the greatest fighter pilots in history. He gunned down 80 enemy aircrafts before getting killed in his last battle. Today, he's a cultural phenomenon. Movies were made about him, books written about his accomplishments, and even memorials built in his honor. And this is René Funk, claimed to have gunned down 127 German planes. So a lot more than the Red Baron. Whereas the Red Baron lost three battles, the last one killing him at the young age of 25, René Funk and his plane were never even scratched by enemy fire. Yet all we know about René Funk is a hard to find autobiography, some mentions here and there ending up largely forgotten. As if the Red Baron took all his recognition. But this is not unique to fighter pilots. If I ask you who was the first African American to refuse a seat to a white person during segregation, you're probably going to say Rosa Parks. But it was actually Claudette Colvin, nine months before Rosa Parks. Same city, same action, completely different outcomes. Rosa Parks is a civil rights hero, Claudette Colvin, largely forgotten. So why, for the same performance, the same action, the same heroic act, some people get superhero status and others end up with nothing? Well, the scientist Albert Laszlo Barabasi figured out why in his excellent book, The Formula. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the five universal laws backed by actual science that determine why some people for the same performance reap tremendous rewards and others don't. And I'm not exaggerating, but these laws can absolutely change the trajectory of your life. See, success in the traditional sense has been fascinating people for years. Hundreds of books about this subject are written every year, some by experts, largely by charlatans. But this is probably one of the best books on the subject. The science behind it is just mind-blowing. See, you can absolutely work your hardest for decades and still be a complete nobody in your field. So let's start by debunking this misconception. Performance is about you what you do on a daily basis, how fast you run, how well you sing. Success, however, is about us. How we see you competing with others, how we perceive your performance. Success is a collective phenomenon, not an individual one. Once you really internalize that, it will make it much more easier for you to get closer to your goals. And the first law illustrates it perfectly. When performance isn't measured, Network drives success. Modern art is a fascinating field, to say the least. You see people buying artwork for tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. Is there a real difference between these pieces of art that justifies this humongous price difference? Well, in contrast to fields where performance is measured, performance in art is highly subjective. What determines if your art is worthy of being exposed in the world's best galleries is not really your performance. You see, there was this duo of graffiti artists named Seymo, Al Diaz and Jean-Michel Basquiat. And they gained notoriety by leaving enigmatic graffitis all around Manhattan in the late 70s. Both highly creative and talented, yet one reached tremendous levels of success, and one never really had a solo breakthrough. The only difference was, Al Diaz chose to produce in obscurity, while Basquiat was an unapologetic networker. Basquiat did everything in his power to befriend the greatest artists of his era, like Andy Warhol. Even though he was not studying at school, he hung around the School of Visual Arts, and then up befriending Diego Cortez, a well-connected artist from New York's village, who gave Basquiat an opportunity to expose his paintings side-by-side -side paintings by Warhol or Maplethorpe. And in under two years, Basquiat went from homeless teenager to A-list celebrity. In 2017, 29 years after his death, one of Basquiat's paintings sold for a record-breaking $110 million. So what can we learn from Jean-Michel Basquiat? You see, most fields stand in the middle. Both performance and network drive success. From sales to investing to coding, we need not only to improve our performance and craft, but we need to relentlessly pursue opportunities to network. Nassim Taleb talks about it as well in The Black Swan. Most people don't even recognize what a lucky break is. Go to parties and mingle with people and let serendipity do its job. Because the second law shows that even though performance is bounded, success is unbounded. From athletes to products like wine, being a fraction better than your competition will make your rewards hundreds of times or even thousands of times bigger. Usain Bolt is the fastest runner on the earth. Yet, when we look at his performance, he's running only 1% faster 
than the one who loses the competition. That's because performance is inherently bounded, but success is unbounded. Those who really do well at the top can be rewarded exceptionally. The best can be rewarded 10 times, hundreds, often thousand times better than the one who's second best at the very same game. It's what's known as the power laws or the winner-take-all effect. That's for sports, when performance is actually measured. What about when it's not measured and success is limitless? Well, the wine industry illustrates it perfectly. You see these wine experts, they taste wines and give awards for a living. Well, Robert Hodgson, a winemaker, basically debunked how the entire field is basically junk. Hudson was shocked that his wines earned confusing results in competitions. Time and again, the results seemed completely random. So he decides to run an experiment. He presented three bottles for the judges to taste. And to his surprise, the judges gave 80, the lowest rate, to the first one they tasted. Then 90, a good rate to the second one. And then 96, a rating worthy of a gold medal to the third one. But what the judges didn't know was that they just tasted the same wine three times in a row. And it just confirmed what Hogson was worried about. And how can we use this to our advantage? Well, if we know that performance is bounded, then we can demystify superstars or leading products or services in our competition. Even though they may have this superstar status, it's more of a halo effect because if we worked hard and our performance is on the upper limit, it means they're not far off. We can be aware of these psychological factors and remember that they're as capable of failure as us. And one great example that embodied this law, and I might be biased, was the Moroccan team in the Football World Cup Finals. Time and again, they were able to win against the greatest teams and players and reach the semi-finals against all odds. Which brings us to the third law. Previous success times fitness equals future success. It's what's known as preferential attachment. Artists, athletes, entrepreneurs who accomplish past success can easily accomplish future success if they keep the same performance. Let's take Robert Galbraith, a former military police officer who is now pursuing a writing career. After completing his manuscript for his crime novel, The Cuckoo's Calling, he was looking for a publisher to take it. A major publisher found it decent but passed on it. And after a few rejections, a publisher accepted to take the book and released it in April 2013. Got some good enough reviews, but despite the praise, the book sold 500 copies. Nothing crazy. But then a rumor started circulating, saying that Robert Galbraith had the same agent as J.K. Rowling. And the Sunday Times also detected some linguistic similarities between The Cuckoo's Calling and J.K. Rowling's books, Harry Potter. A lot of cues that pointed to the same direction. And backed into a corner, J.K. Rowling admits that Robert Galbraith is her. She hoped to publish this new book without the hype to actually receive unbiased feedback from the audience. Unfortunately for her, it didn't work out really as she wanted, but the next day, J.K. Rowling's The Cuckoo's Calling became instantly an international bestseller. Sales on Amazon are reported to have risen by a staggering 500,000%. And that's the power of preferential attachment. But I want to emphasize the fitness part of the equation. J.K. Rowling was still delivering quality work. As the author says, the crowds can push the good enough to unearned fame, but they'll rarely get wholeheartedly behind the mediocre. The fourth law shows that while team success requires the diversity and balance, a single individual will receive the credit in any amazing human accomplishment. Even though the work is done by incredible teams, one person usually takes the credit. The Chicago Bulls won six championships as an incredible team, but Michael Jordan gets disproportionate credit. And on the business side, let's take Apple. When we mention the iPhone, our mind goes straight to Steve Jobs. But have you heard of Johnny Ive, the great designer behind the iPhone, the iPad, and the iMac? So if you're working in a team, let's say in a company, or with people who already have a reputation in your field. How can you avoid this? Well, the author emphasizes that if you want to build a name for yourself, it's good to start working for someone who already has an established reputation in your field. You're going to learn a lot and his reputation will rub off on yours. Starting out in my business career, I worked as a book agent for Jay Sammet, an author, but also an accomplished business person. He was in leadership in Sony Music, Universal, and I learned tremendously from him. But at a certain point, you need to branch out 
out on your own to make a name for yourself. And the fifth and last law shows us that with persistence, success can come at any time. Sounds cheesy, but it's true. Successful scientists and entrepreneurs succeed because they try more often. The more you contribute, the higher your odds of a breakthrough. Age doesn't really matter, but that persistence alone is just a part of an equation literal equation for success. RQ equal S. R is the idea's value. Is it a good idea, a great idea, or a mediocre idea? Q is the Q factor or a person's skill and abilities. And S is success. So let's take Steve Jobs as an example. We can agree that he had a high Q factor, great entrepreneurial spirit, good persuasion skills, leadership skills, branded skills. But before Apple, he had a lot of low R value ideas. But with persistence, let's take the iPhone as the ultimate intersection between a high Q factor with a high R value idea. The only caveat when using this equation is if you keep failing at breaking through. In this case, maybe persistence is not going to work as it might mean that you pick the wrong vocation. You need a vocation that matches your Q factor and where success can bring you traction. When that match is made, the only advice is don't give up. And if you want more advice on how to advance your career, you can watch my interview with Robert Green.